Hi, this is Steve Graves with the California State University Northridge Geography Department and geographyplanet.org. This video tutorial is designed to help students learn to take point data, in this case crime events, from multiple years. We're going to merge them into a single file so that we have a three-year average. We will then select a single crime, burglary, and then select only for the crimes that happened in the Antelope Valley area of Los Angeles County. We will then use the Collect Events tool to prepare it so that we can use the Kernel Density tool, which will give us a more logical hotspot map of burglaries in this area. Then we will convert that hotspot map using a tool called Zonal Statistics as Table to then join the hotspot average or mean of burglaries back to census tract maps. So that's a lot to do in a limited amount of time so let's get started. What you see here on the screen is an image or a map of the Antelope Valley. It includes the cities of Lancaster and Palmdale. I'm going to turn off the Sheriff Patrol Districts and we're just going to zoom in here a little bit. What I'm going to add is a layer of all crimes in Los Angeles County recorded by the LA Sheriff's Department. So it's quite a few, 164,000. That's for 2014. And I'm going to turn on 2015 and 2016 and zoom in so that you can see that there are uh, an enormous number of these crime points and that in order for us to do research grade analysis, oftentimes it's recommended that we have at least three years of data. It is more convenient if we can combine it into one single file and then process it from there. So I've already selected the analysis tab and I'm going to click on tools. I'm going to type in here merge and then press enter and that causes the merge tool to appear in the geoprocessing tools window and so we want to click on that. Merge allows us to combine three separate files into one. I have already opened the attribute table for 2016, 2015, and 2014, and I have inspected the columns of data, and I know that they are all identical for all three years, which is important because you don't want to have extraneous columns in some years and not in other years. It's always best if they always match. The input data sets are from my list, the 2016 crimes, 2015 crimes, and the 2014 crimes. The output data set, I'm going to rename it to LASD 2014-16 merge. And I'm going to leave the rest of this in its default format. Click Run, and it takes a few moments. After the process completed itself, I was left with this new file. I can turn off the older layers now of those years, and it would be smart to open the attribute table and inspect that I have the correct number of rows of data of new points. And in this case, it's over 600,000. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of these and what I want to do is to select a subset of crimes in two ways. The first one, click on map, and I want to select by location. And the input features are my new file, my merged file, and anything that intersects the block groups in the Antelope Valley. Click apply. Now that the crimes that are within my study area have been selected. I'm going to right click on the layer, click data, and export the features as Antelope Valley LASD Crimes 2014 16. I may want to check the environments. The output coordinate system that I would like is the one 
that is the default in this map, which is the NAD83 State Plane 5, which is an excellent projection for Los Angeles County. I click OK, and it's going to give me a much reduced file focused only on the Antelope Valley. I can now uncheck the file that concerns the rest of Los Angeles County. Next, we're going to select only burglaries. So in order to do that, I want to select the Select by Attributes button and click on New Expression. I want just a certain category of crimes. And for this category, I'm going to select just the burglaries. Apply. And as we see, only the burglaries are now selected. All the other crimes appear as red dots. OK. So one last data export. And this time, I'm going to name the output feature AV, LA Sheriff Department, Bergs 2014-16. Keep everything else the way it is. The environments I won't have to worry about, but once again, maybe just double check to make sure that it's all in State Plane 5. Uh, projected data for the kind of thing that we're doing is always better. Click OK, and I will have yet another new file. I'm going to change these to uh, some other symbol, a small blue dot. These are my burglaries over a three-year period in the Antelope Valley. Our next task is to use a tool called Collect Events. And the reason we want to do that is because with point data, sometimes there are multiple events stacked up on top of one another in an exactly the same place. And this is especially important for data from law enforcement who often will only report an intersection. And so the geocoding process puts a crime at an intersection or perhaps a single house has been burglarized multiple times. And so we want to make sure that we understand that some places have multiple crimes. Go to the Analysis tab, click on the toolbox, and type in this time Collect Events. Select the Collect Events tool. The incident features, of course, are our burglaries. And here is the output that it's going to create. Click Run. Takes a moment. And we have a new layer. This layer appears in yellow, a little harder to see. Change the symbology here really quickly. This time, maybe a light blue. OK, easier to see. And if we zoom in on this spot here, we can see that there are multiple incidences of a burglary at this location. Using the Collected Events layer, we're going to turn this into a type of hotspot map called Kernel Density. So go to the Geoprocessing Tools and begin to type in Kernel Density. There's the tool. The Input Point feature is of course, our collected burglaries. The population field would be I count, which is the number of burglaries. And there's a great deal of fussing that you can do with this, if you would like. I'm going to change the aerial units to miles. And what that's going to do is that around each of these points, it's going to put a essentially a mile buffer. The closer that you get to a single point, with a value of 1, the closer the raster value, the pixel, underneath it will be to 1. Here is the output cell size. It is a default size. And we can change that to the way we would like it. The environments, again, we want to keep this in state plane 5. And I am going to mask it against the background map, the demographic block group map. Once I do that, you may come back here and see that the output cell size has changed just a tiny bit. If you've already done this, it's important to use a snap raster against one of the previous ones. And since I actually have that, I'm going, I've already done this once, I'm going to have it snap to a previously done raster for aggravated assaults. Let's give it a new name. I'm going to call this Burglaries 
KDS one attempt one run. And just like that, I have a raster map. I have to turn off my point layer in order my point layers in order to see it. And it's still pretty transparent. But what that is essentially showing us is that where there is dark purple, there is a great deal of clustering of burglaries. And this is in Lancaster and Palmdale. I generally like to change the symbology on this from a symbology in which the lower values are transparent to a multicolor ramp style one, perhaps green to red, and then you can spend time uh, futzing with this if you want. Oftentimes I will make the lowest value in whatever ramp I'm using gray so that these vast stretches of desert don't appear to have any value. The second to last tool that we're going to use when clicking on tool is called Zonal Statistics as Table. And it shows up here. And what this is going to do is take this raster data and put it in a table based on my block groups. So what I need to do is find my block group map. I have selected the block group census data map. The zone field is simply ID, which is a block group ID. The input value raster is the one that's on the screen, which is the burglary kernel density one map. And here is the zonal table that it's going to produce. I may give it a slightly different name, Berg one. And I don't need all the statistics in this instance. All I want is the average number of burglaries per census block group or tract if I was using a tract map. And then I click Run. And that's a very rapid process. I noticed that at, it appears as a standalone table at the bottom, Zonal Statistics Berg 1. And the very last step in this process is to join that table to my uh, block group map here that I will turn in. This layer is currently showing total population. And what I want to do is join, joins and relates, add a join. And this is a table join. The input field will be ID, which is the census tract ID, the block group ID, and we I want to join that to my new Berg 1 table. And that's pretty much it. Click OK. Now if I open the attribute table to this census map and I scroll all of the all the way to the right, I see the mean, which is now what I want to change my graduated color map to. Scroll down, mean, there it is. And now I have a map of the mean number of burglaries. If I go all the way back to my burglary point map, you will see how I've converted this point map to a kernel density map, and then I've taken the data from the kernel density hotspot map and dumped it in this census tract, census block group map. That concludes this video tutorial. <music>